summer's temperatures and wet weather mean an increase in both mosquito activity and the discomfort they bring to our residents. As part of its outreach efforts to get information to our citizens, Pinellas County invited the local media to a tour of its mosquito control headquarters with full access to technicians who spoke about how the battle against the insect pest is waged. Pinellas County mosquito control technicians are aggressively treating known breeding areas by ground and by air, as well as responding to calls from citizens. I have 11 technicians that cover from Tarpon Springs all the way down to Fort DeSoto and they're out there looking for standing water and when they find huge areas where it may take two or three of them to cover, we, we call in for the helicopter support to come in and take that while we can keep our technicians looking elsewhere for the standing water. Everyone knows the fog in trucks and they ask why we don't do it. We do still do it. It's normally at night and it's just for the few hours where most people are sleeping, but the fogging is last resort to try and catch the adults that are flying around. As adults, you know, they're a nuisance and that's at the stage where they, try, they carry diseases. They have a lot of places to fly, whereas if we can find them in the larvae, they're confined to certain areas and they're easier to treat. So we really focus at the larval stage. We have a helicopter that hits them from the air and we have 11 technicians that hit it from the ground and that search out the larvae and treat with chemicals like BTI which is a, uh, a natural bacteria in the soil. We also use a growth hormone, whereas the larvae turns into a pupa, the hormone kicks in and prevents them from turning into an adult. The techniques of aerial spraying and fogging trucks traveling through our neighborhoods at night are perhaps the most familiar weapons in the arsenal. But a small fish, the gambusia, has become an important component in the battle against eradicating mosquitoes in their early larval stage before they become airborne. One of the tools we use for the larvae is gambuji fish. It's a biological control. Uh, lately we've been getting a lot of foreclosures with pools in the backyard that's no one's maintaining so we'll go out and instead of having to treat the pool every week with chemicals we'll drop some gambuji fish in. The gambuji fish eat the larvae and it'll take care of the problem for however long we need it. Technicians have noted that many homes they've inspected also have items or areas that contain standing water, the ideal breeding condition for mosquitoes, and this is contributing to the problem. Most important thing is we all need to find that standing water to get, get rid of the larvae before they become adults. We really focus on the larvae because if we can prevent the larvae getting off, then we don't have to worry about the adults being a nuisance or transmitting diseases at some point. The threat of mosquito-borne illnesses, although minimal, is present throughout the year and is a concern to both county officials and residents alike. Some of the health issues that arise from mosquito bites are usually encephalitis-based diseases. The symptoms of mosquito-borne illnesses usually occur a few days to weeks after they've been bitten, and it can be anywhere from flu-like symptoms to actual encephalitis, which is a swelling of the brain, to actually a feeling of where your bones feel like they're breaking. It's really a strange instance. Sometimes there are even arthritic symptoms, so we always tell people if they believe they've been bitten by a mosquito and they've gotten sick, they need to see their doctor for testing. The Florida Department of Health in Pinellas County works with the mosquito control in Pinellas County to try to prevent mosquitoes from actually growing and breeding. Um, on the health department side, providers are required by law to let us know if someone has gotten sick from a mosquito bite or gets an encephalitis. So we monitor that closely with all providers in Pinellas County. Through lab results is normally where we get um, reportings. The most effective method of detecting the presence of any viruses in our area are the sentinel chickens, who are tested weekly for contact with infected mosquitoes. Eight chicken coops with seven chickens each are strategically located throughout the county from Tarpon Springs to St. Petersburg. I take a sample of their blood weekly and have it tested for Eastern Quine encephalitis, West Nile virus, and St. Louis encephalitis. If the bird tests positive, we know the virus is active in that area and we'll concentrate all our efforts in that area. If the bird tests positive, it will always be positive, and I'll pull that bird out and replace it with a fresh bird, and the one that's positive will retire over to Stepping Stone Farms in Hillsborough County. Mosquito control experts recommend citizens follow the program of the four Ds, drain, dress, 
dusk and dawn, DEET. Drain all standing water around your home. Mosquitoes need only one quarter to one half inch of water for the larvae to survive. Avoid outdoor activity during the dawn and dusk hours when mosquitoes are most active. Dress with long sleeve shirts and long pants. Further protect your skin from mosquito bites when outdoors by wearing mosquito repellents containing DEET. Pinellas County Mosquito Control asks all citizens to do their part to reduce the mosquito population. Some simple suggestions are to empty water from flower pots, garbage cans, recycling containers, wheelbarrows, aluminum cans, boat tarps, old tires and buckets, any item that can hold water. Flush bird baths and wading pools weekly. Flush ornamental bromeliads or treat with BTI, a biological larvicide available at home stores. Clean roof gutters, which can become clogged and hold water. Change the water in outdoor pet dishes regularly. Stock ornamental ponds with mosquito-eating fish. Cover rain barrels with screening. Keep pools and spas chlorinated and filtered. By taking these simple preventative measures, citizens can help reduce the number of mosquitoes in our county and minimize mosquito-borne diseases. For more information and strategies on how you can help fight mosquitoes, please go to www.pinellascounty.org mosquito.